Well, hello there, and welcome to another FAQ Monday. I am your host, Fluff, and today we're going to do something special. Just kidding. Nothing special, because we did that last week. But so this week we're back to like regular boring FAQ Mondays. Sorry, I can't be special every week. <laughs> you know, it's like once every two years. First question. What is your current video editing software? Currently, I am editing in Adobe Premiere CC. I have no plans to really move away from that. I temporarily gone back to Final Cut Pro 10 to get some jobs out because there was some weird bug in one of the older builds of Premiere that prevented video playback, which if you're editing video, that's kind of important. But I'm back to Adobe Premiere CC where I have been for like the last year, year and a half, and I just love it to death. And also I like using it more than Final Cut Pro because if I was actually to go and try to get a job as some kind of a post-production video editor guy, nine times out of 10, they would be using Adobe Premiere CC anyway. So I kind of want to stay with that just in case, God forbid, all of this goes away because you know what, you never know. What should I look for when getting a pair of studio monitors? For me, I look for two main things. I look for the customer reviews and what they have to say when they're used in the real world. And B, I look for the uh, flattest frequency response I can get for that price range. Now, I will start with just kind of shopping around and kind of asking some friends what they like. And then I will then go to Amazon. And then I'll probably go to like something like Sweetwater and if they carry that monitor, I will read all of the reviews and I will even uh, often email my Sweetwater rep because really that's what they're for and that's what they get paid for. Um, I'll just collect as much data as you can and then I will look to see if there's a, a chart charting the frequency response because I am looking for the flattest possible response I can find now. For example, my Neumann KH120s have a very, very flat response, but they are a very, very expensive monitor. I think they're like eight or 900 bucks a piece. Um, the JBLs, the JBL LSR 308s that I have actually have a fairly flat response anyway, but in those monitors, I'm not really looking for a flat response because I already have that for the Neumann. So for example, the 308s, I'm primarily looking at the accuracy of the low end because that's what I'm really using the larger driver for. So it's really depending on what you're using it for, but yeah, frequency response and average customer reviews, man, live and die by those two things. How did Rest Repose get their band name? Um, it's kind of a short story. We're gonna go in deep a little bit. And right when I got divorced, I had this moment of clarity and I could see as if it were a book, I could see the entirety of my nearly 10 year marriage and I could look down upon it and see very specific scenarios and situations that I had messed up in and that I kind of really regretted. And I didn't wanna forget the moment that my marriage died because that was when it kind of just really hit me like a ton of bricks. I saw the entirety of my relationship and it was kind of like a requiem. And the root word, the literal root word for the word requiem is rest comma repose. Now, if you were to take the name literally, it would mean rest, rest, but um, a repose and a requiem is kind of a remembrance slash funeral kind of a thing. So. Yeah, the, the band name is just to remind me to never forget how I felt in that moment. I've heard it's possible to convert a Mesa Boogie to a rectifier head from 100 watts to 50 watts. Is this possible? And if so, how is it done? Yes, absolutely. You can also do that trick with just about any 100 watt tube head that I know of. What you do is you pull either the two outside or the two inside tubes to step it down to 50 watts. And you never wanna pull the two left or two right, you have to keep the circuit symmetrical. So that's why you have to do the two inside or two outside. Um, with the Mesa Boogie Do Rectifier in particular, be sure to pull one of the rectifier tubes as well, because if you don't, you will be changing the overall impedance rating of the output jacks because they're missing the two power tubes. So make sure you pull the two rectifier tubes and your, your cab will still match the proper homage of the output jack. My suggestion to you this week is to check out Rated 80s, specifically the podcast that I just did. Rated 80s is an awesome podcast run by Rusty and Jeremy. They're two comedians here in the Northwest. They're very funny and they talk about 80s movies and just cool things in general. And I was lucky enough to be on the, to be on the show and I was a guest and we talked about all things Back to the Future and we super nerded out and it turned out really awesome and it was a lot of fun. 
being on the show. Thank you, gentlemen, for that. You've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.